So on to the cylinders. Um, now, the reason that we started uh, to rebuild this engine in the first place uh, was because it was uh, burning oil. And so one of the main reasons for burning oil, especially on a triple, is because the rings aren't bedding in properly, aren't, uh, you know, there's wear in the cylinder and the rings aren't working, the uh, piston rings. So uh, I'm having a look. And uh, so the first thing we do is look at scoring, especially vertical scoring. So, you know, there's the normal sort of vertical scoring that I'd expect to find. Um, not too deep. So that might be able to be honed out. The piston, surprisingly, I think are standard. Just checking that. I don't think they're plus 20 or anything. Um, I can't see anything, so I'm just trying to look. I can't see it. it says one on it. So I think they're standard pistons, which I'm surprised at, you know, because the crank's been ground and so on. So I'd have expected this to have had a rebore at the same time, but it would appear not. Um, but anyway, the cylinders don't look too bad in terms of scoring, but they definitely need a hone at very least. So then I'm going to check to see uh, how vertical they are because what can happen with pistons is they wear in like a cone shape like a volcano and they wear much more at the bottom because I think because of the circular action of the piston as it goes around it tends to sort of work sideways on the bores and can make them uh, uh, elliptical so I've got a bore uh, gauge here which I shall attempt uh, to use one handed and probably fail so let's have a look. Okay. So I'm going to say we're about naught there. As far as accurate as I can get it, yeah. And then, yeah, we're not far off anyway. Maybe there's a bit of wear, sideways wear, because we seem to be on less than zero sideways and, but uh, lengthways if I can get my gauge right uh, it's pretty it's pretty similar pretty similar okay try the next one if I can No, a bit more wear on that maybe is there no no again try yeah so the maximum we get there oh we're getting just up to naught on that maximum and what are we getting on that So probably slightly oval. No real sign of them being cone shaped. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. So to me, the balls look pretty straight. Obviously there's surface scratching. Uh, I'm going to put the pistons in now. Well, I'll put one piston in, put it in from the bottom. I've taken the piston rings off and I've taken the conrod fully out. Put it in from the bottom because at the top there's always um, there's always where uh, sorry there's always I'm just trying to shove the piston instead of fall out. I'll turn it back over it probably will yeah. Okay um, yeah don't put it in from the top because there's always a bit of burn on the uh, on on the very top edge where the piston rings don't don't reach you know this this very dark ring. So you try and put a piston in from the top, it's never uh, works too well. They won't go in. Right, let's have a look. It feels fairly smooth, that piston, but there is a little bit of play. Maybe a bit too much. Now I look at it, maybe there's too much play there. So, I'm not sure. It could just do with a home, but that play in the piston, maybe there's just a bit too much there. But I need a proper feeder gauge to check that because I've got a flat feeder gauge and obviously you need a curved 
feeder gauge to check the uh, I think as I say I think you should have about a four thou or five thou maximum gap between the piston and the cylinder walls for the because obviously the piston will expand expand slightly um, as it gets hot being alloy it'll at least it'll expand more than the cylinder so you don't want too small a gap because it'll, as it gets hot it will seize um so we, so it's anyway cylinders aren't bad but it's a question mark uh, whether it's just a hone or whether it's a rebore again leave that up to the engineers okay let's go on to the cylinder head okay so first thing on the cylinder head, we're just going to double check these valves and uh, i've got an inlet valve here just going to push it nearly fully as fully as i can and yeah there's a fair bit of rock on it you can hear that pinging away you won't be able to see it but so we're going to replace the um inlet valve uh, the we'll replace all the um valve uh, valve guides all these will be replaced uh also these these for some reason don't have valve stem seals on uh, on any of them so we at least need valve stem seals on the inlets and these guys um, they should have a groove that the the, the um, oil seal clips onto and these don't um and whether or not we fit them to the exhaust is a matter of some debate because when the inlet valve opens the engine is sucking air in and it sucks oil and air and oil down past the valve through the valve guide and, and so that's when it burns of course when the exhaust valve opens the engine is pushing the exhaust gases out so if even if it is leaking oil the oil doesn't tend to go in it tends to get pushed out blown out if, if the guides are worn it will push out so um having said that you know i tend to put valve stem seals on the exhaust anyway but you know that's that's the reasoning behind it you know the air sucked in until so the oil gets sucked in with the air if the guides are worn on the inlet but it gets pushed out on the exhaust we'll see on that one but new valve guides anyway and the uh the face of the cylinder head and the face of the barrels seems fine so i don't think that need, needs to be machined flat obviously if there's any sign of leaking from the cylinder head gasket you might want to consider having the head skimmed and uh, possibly the barrel skimmed as well uh, but this seems fine so no need for machining on that okay on to the actual uh, valve guys the valves themselves uh, so we've got an inlet and an exhaust valve so I'm going to measure the stem thickness on the inlet I'm getting 308 307 on the exhaust a bit more on the exhaust no I'm not I had it sideways yeah about 308 again okay so both 308 so again go to the manual valve stems 31 or 395 so again both of them uh so beyond the lower guideline so again i'm afraid it looks like new valves not cheap but if you don't want the bite of smoke oil then i would suggest you know doing that okay so because the valve you know, obviously we've got new valve guides but if the guides are very big you know you know if the stems are worn then they're just going to still slush around so i think we're going to have to need new valves as well okay and on to the uh, valve springs you've got an inner spring and an outer spring so inner spring is one for two free length and it's saying one four six eight so again a bit short and the outer is reading 1541 and that should be uh, 16 so again a bit short so again i recommend um uh, let's have a look yeah i recommend uh putting new new uh, valve springs in as well 
if we, you know if we're going to do it so i'm afraid that'll be new valves new valve guides and new valve springs which to be honest is what i was uh, kind of expecting so uh you know, i say some will be different than others because it depends if a valve if it's been sitting there with the valve being compressed then obviously that valve's going to be shorter the spring's going to be shorter but yeah so uh pretty sure on that one so uh, then last thing to look at is the uh, tappets or cam followers and the cam shafts. I finally, I think, is the, the cam shafts and the cam followers or tappets. So uh, the cams look absolutely fine and the tappets look okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take them down and just uh, see about having them uh, lightly, lightly polished, lightly honed, just to get rid of any scratches. You know, there's nothing major there. But uh, you know, there's just a bit scuffed, uh, so I might I'll see about getting them polished. And exactly the same with the feet of the uh, tappets or cam followers. Maybe there's a there's a bit more on them, but I think they'll marks on them. But I think they'll be okay. I think they've got some, you know, very strong metal. You know, don't ask me what it is. But the the feet of these, it, you know, if you actually look, um, you know, there's you see a little line there down the bottom. That's because that's where the, the sort of the veneer, the sort of metal is added, a very, very strong dendritic, whatever it is. I have no idea, but I know it's a very, very hard metal on the feet of these. So I think uh, we can get away with just taking the tappets and the cam follows down, just getting them polished. I don't think there's anything really wrong with them. So that should be it, really. So I think uh, on Monday, I'm going to take this lot down to the engineers, the barrels, look at honing or, or rebore, polishing the camshafts, cam followers, new valve guides uh, fitted, uh, and I think, oh, and of course the crankshaft uh, to uh, see about either, again, polishing um, the, the, uh, the bearings on that or, or again, whether we need a, a regrind. So we'll, we'll take it all down on... Um, Monday and see what the engineers think Whew, and then uh, we're sort of getting near to uh, starting to, to rebuild